Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. We have so much new Chanel makeup to talk about, specifically highlighters. So I have the new Holiday Collection, the new Oversized Highlighters, and the new Sublimage Liquid Illuminator. So I figured we would talk about everything all at once. And I'm sure the number one question on your mind right now is when will this be available online? From what I understand, the holiday gift sets are going to be launching this Friday. My plan is to rush to the boutique, come back, and quickly film and edit a video. If I remember correctly, this holiday collection is also going to launch officially on October 13th. I'm gonna start by unboxing the holiday collection. I am so excited about this. I actually saw this in person before it launched and I could not say a word and I didn't even see any sneak peek so they kept this really tightly under wraps which is great. This is the new Duo Lumiere Illuminating Powder Duo. It comes with a velvet protector and a mini brush that also has a velvet protector and when you open it up you see the beautiful sequin design. I love how some of the sequins have the little Chanel CCs. The intricate detail on this highlighter is so beautiful. It's actually impressive because this is one of the smaller highlighters but you can see every little individual thread going through the sequins. I mean, the detail is remarkable. I don't know how they do it. The shade on top is a warm taupey gold and the shade on the bottom is a really pretty pearl. Another detail the camera might not pick up, but you can definitely tell with the swatch is that these are very shimmery and I think there is micro glitter in both the top and the bottom. Definitely in the bottom. The pearly white is a little bit glittery not in a bad way and i think it's fine especially since this is the festive holiday collection i think that's what people are looking for you want to look like a disco ball during the holidays for holiday parties but there is a little bit more glitter i would say than the typical chanel highlighters which tend to be a little bit smoother a little bit more subtle next we have lumiere graphique this is the five pan eyeshadow palette all neutrals all metallic and all stunning. I absolutely love the look of this. This gets me so excited. It's been a while since we've seen a five pan eyeshadow palette, right? Am I forgetting something? Well, I guess we have the Le Beige eyeshadow palettes are also five pan technically, but this is a different shape. It comes in a different shaped compact. I don't know. It's special. I'm excited about it. And it has the same beautiful sequin design embossed on the powder so pretty. I also picked up Laverne in 171 sequins. It's a really pretty black with silver shimmer. I'm not sure how opaque this is going to be or if it's going to be more of a sheer topper. The last few pieces I picked up from the holiday collection are lipsticks. I picked up Rouge Allure Lac shade 90 golden beige, 91 fancy prune, and then against my better judgment, I didn't want to, but I felt like I had to. I also picked up one of the Rouge Allure L'Extray lipsticks. This is shade 857 Midnight Red. They are refillable and I like the formula. If you watched my full review of the Rouge Allure L'Extray, you already know my issue with them. You just don't get as much lipstick and the price is a little bit higher. And here we have Le Symbol de Chanel Oversize Illuminating Face Powders. I picked up two. There are five different designs in three different shades to choose from. So you can really pick your favorite combination. I went with the Precious Coral and Pearly White. In the Pearly White, I picked up the pearls. Les Pearls, because I thought this was so classic Chanel. And this is a highlighter that I am going to put in my Do Not Touch makeup collection. I have a growing collection of Chanel compacts that I do not touch. I hate to break it to you or break anybody's heart. I feel confident in my decision because I swatched this in store. I swatched the new holiday highlighter. It is the exact same shade. And I use pieces like this to stage photo shoots, product photography, things like that. So. It's not that it's just going to sit and collect dust. I will use it, you will see it. Now this highlighter I purchased with the intention of using it and I chose La Camellia. I really like all five designs. The Le Chain was really pretty and I actually think it's even more beautiful in the oversized compact because you can really see the design. We also have Le Lion, which will be familiar to some of you if you remember holiday 2018. Le Comet is also really beautiful and unique. I was personally drawn to the pearls and the camellia, and this camellia is different from the other camellia, the Rev de Camellia that we saw a couple years ago. I went with shade Precious Coral. The shades are not unique. I don't know if they're always available, but they've been available in the past. 
So I didn't feel the need to pick up one of each shade. We've seen these shades before. What really makes this collection interesting is the pattern. The camellia is set on a tweed background and then certain petals along the camellia have the tweed print, which I think is so pretty. I love the tweed camellia details and then the little CC in the middle. And the final new product I have to share before we get into the makeup is the Sublimage Le Concentré Lumiere. This is a liquid highlighter from the Sublimage line. It comes with its own little fan brush, which I think is always a nice touch. And this retails for $95. The oversized compacts are also $95 in the US. It has hyaluronic acid, so it's meant to plump the skin. Imagine because it's Sublimage, it also has the vanilla planifolia, but you're not really going to get skincare. This is not going to turn back the clock on your face. We have to be honest with ourselves. It's great to have skincare infused with our makeup products. I love that. What sets this liquid illuminator apart, and I've received a couple questions about it. For one thing, the shade. The shade is very gold. It has a lot of micro glitter. This is shiny, shiny, shiny. I really think it is best for just tapping on the cheek, tapping on the shoulders, neck, chest, decollete, when you want to really glow, really beam. So you can see a comparison in the bottle. This is the number one de Chanel, which I think is $70. This has skincare, doesn't have nearly as much glow. This I would use as a primer. This is shade medium coral. This is the iridescent illuminating fluid. This was part of the number five holiday collection two years ago. It's shade or Ivoire. I don't know if you're going to be able to see on camera just in the bottle, but the Sublimage has way more shimmer. I just forgot. I was planning on using the Sublimage Le Swan Perfecteur and go through my entire Sublimage makeup routine and do the full face, but I have a lot of skincare on right now and I don't want this to pill. I don't want it to ruin the makeup. So because I already have so much on as a base, including SPF, I am just going to quickly spritz my face with this Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray from Charlotte Tilbury. This is going to be our prep step. And then what I'll do is in another makeup video later on this week, I will use the entire Sublimage line. I pulled out my Sublimage Le Tint. I always use B30 and I found my brush. I'm just going to dab right into the cap. I'm so excited to finally apply these products to my face. They've been sitting in the box waiting for me to take them out. And I think this collection is probably going to be one of the only ones I pick up this year just because I implemented a rule which I will probably end up breaking, a two, in, two out, one in rule so that I can slowly but surely use up what I already have, what's already open in my collection. I did also pick up a few pieces from the Shantakai, I think it's the Shantakai Heavy Metal Holiday Collection. I could not resist, it's so pretty. They always kill me with their packaging. So I purchased the pink powder, the eyeshadow. It's a really pretty rose gold and the lip gloss. I haven't touched it yet. <laughs> that I ordered when we were in the Keys and it's been sitting at my vanity, but they're so pretty. I feel like I have to take pictures of them before I can just dig in. Probably gonna skip Dior. I thought about picking up a couple of pieces from Dior this year because it is really beautiful. I was going back and forth over the advent calendar, but then I just decided against it. Sublimage Le Corrector, yeah, of course. We're gonna do Sublimage Concealer as well. Same thing, I'm just picking it up with my brush directly from the cap. I'm curious how everybody else is doing. Are you doing a lot of holiday makeup shopping this year? Have you scaled back? What's your strategy at the moment? There is a lot of really pretty holiday makeup. But as I always say, just because it's pretty doesn't mean you have to buy it. I can't just buy everything because it's pretty. I just spread that out, but I'm going to let it dry down for a moment and then I'm going to spritz my face with the setting spray again. If you didn't know, I attended Sephora last weekend in New York City. It was a very quick trip, a one day event, but I had so much fun. Sephora is the name of a beauty convention put on by Sephora every year. The last few years, it's been virtual because of COVID, obviously. Prior to COVID, they did have it in person and it was in Los Angeles and the photos looked so incredible. I knew if they ever held it again in person, I would wanna go. I booked my ticket a couple months ago as soon as tickets went on sale. Not really sure what to expect. 
The weather in New York City was crazy on Friday, so they had to cancel it. Even though it was chaotic and massively disappointing for the people who were supposed to go on Friday, I will say that barring no natural disaster, no crazy weather situation, it's a lot of fun and I would recommend attending. It was the most incredible convention I've ever been to. When I left Sephora, I wanted to visit the Chanel Beauty Atelier in Soho. It's a beauty boutique. Oop, there's a hair in there. This is Sole Tan de Chanel, by the way. It's a boutique dedicated just for beauty, but I always, I always thought it looked different than our beauty boutiques. So I wanted to visit. It is very different from our beauty boutiques. It's actually more of a hands-on experiential event space where you can have services done, which is really incredible. And I think it's probably the only one or one of a few. So if you've never been, if you've never experienced it, you wouldn't necessarily know what to expect. They had a little station where you could wash your face and try all the skincare products and you could actually get a one-on-one -on -one consultation and then at the end they give you a sample of all of the skincare products that they would recommend to you, which I think was $35. I was surprised that they didn't have the new collection in New York, but they did have it in Miami. By now they might have it. It was just a really cool experience. I did end up picking up a few lipsticks. There was nothing that I needed since they didn't have the new collection. I was like, okay, well, I came all the way here. These people are watching me walk around and take videos. I need to buy something. So I purchased two lipsticks and a nail polish. Did I say this is quintessence blush? This is quintessence blush, just in case I forgot to mention it. I'm gonna go ahead and fill in my eyebrows and then we can dig into all of our new holiday products. Refer recently sent me some new eye brushes, so these are clean, I might as well use them. This is the 15 Max, it's a fluffy brush. And I am gonna go into this shade over here. I'm also going to apply this on the lid, all over the lid up to the crease. This looks so pretty on its own. I think that looks really pretty. I could do eyeliner and mascara and be done. It really is starting to feel like the holidays. Not Christmas holidays, but the holidays. Halloween is coming soon. And we were talking to our neighbors and they said we do get a good amount of trick-or-treaters here. So we don't have any decorations up currently, but now I'm inspired. So I'm gonna have to run to, I don't even know where to go, Joanne Fabrics. Michael's, Home Goods, maybe. Somewhere close, and I need to pick up some decorations and some candy. I'm really excited to hand out candy for our first Halloween in the house. I really like this color, this brown. So this is a Refer Mini 15. I'm gonna go into the brown, and I'm just gonna use this to add a little depth. The outer V, outer corner, a little bit on the outer lid. Not much, I don't think this has to be a super smoky, smoky look. What I'll do next time I use this palette is I'll do a more dramatic smoky eye. I think that's plenty. The first thing that sticks out to me about the formula is that I don't have any fallout at all. Uh, if I look really closely, I can see a few little specks, but they're so small, I could easily brush them off. That's not always the case with Chanel eyeshadows. And also, I'm going in with a fluffier brush, so it's gonna kick up the product a little bit. With a blank brush, I'm just blending the outer crease. Application was easy, the shadows seemed to blend really nicely. And great color payoff. This bright silvery sparkle. I actually think it's kind of a silvery pearl. I'm curious. I'm gonna pop a little bit of this on the center of the eye. I don't know if it's so different from past holiday collections. Even the number five eyeshadow palette from two holidays ago, it was a quad, not a quint, but similar-ish. Blacks, golds, pearly whites and red. They're color codes for the House of Chanel, so it does make sense that they would use them every holiday. 
but we do tend to see the same sorts of colors over and over again. Doesn't bother me because I happen to really like those colors. I'm curious to see what will happen if I run that original gold beneath the lower lash line, the lighter gold. Yeah, I think that works. This is a Refer 13 mini brush. It's doing a nice job. Last thing I'm gonna do is take a small precision brush. This is a 14 mini. And I'm just gonna pop that on the inner tear duct. Ooh, yeah, that's really pretty as a highlight color. I think this is the finished eye look. I did a little liquid eyeliner on the top lash line, and then I did a gold liner in the waterline. You can barely see it. It's an old Chanel liner, and then mascara. This is basically it. I wanted to keep the look somewhat light-ish. I think the colors were really easy to work with. You can create so many beautiful, flattering looks with this palette. Now, if you already have the number five palette from a couple years ago, or you're picking up the Dior Holiday Palette this year. I don't know if this is 100% essential. You probably have a lot of neutral metallic eyeshadows at home. I know a lot of people are curious about this one, so I am gonna test this on one cheek. This is the Sublimage Le Concentré Lumiere. And I will show you what this looks like. Half a pump, that's all I'm doing. This has, let me see something real quick. Okay, so this has half a fluid ounce of product for $95. This is the Rosy Light Drops. This has one full fluid ounce. So the bottles are kind of deceiving. This looks similar in size, but it's actually half the amount of product. So it is way more expensive. I wasn't going to use the brush, but I might as well show you. So I'm picking up the product. It is very pretty on the face. The first time I used it, I was in direct sunlight, so it really looked like it was beaming. This looks a little bit softer than I expected. Even sitting directly in front of the ring light, I like it. You just have to be careful if you let it sit and dry in a concentrated area without properly blending. It's not gonna look very nice, but I like it. It has such a pretty gold sheen. And I do think this is gonna look really beautiful on deeper skin tones. On the other cheek, I'm gonna go in with the Duo Lumiere Illuminating Powder Duo. I'm gonna start with the white and then I will mix it. But let's see what just the white looks like. Oh my goodness. See, I thought the liquid highlighter was very shimmer shimmery, but over here, it actually looks a little bit more like glow. But if I look at this side, I feel like I can see individual little flecks. Now it does look pretty. It looks frosted. This shade stands out a little bit more on the skin, but let me try the top. Ooh. That might be too much. Okay, I'm gonna try this on the nose. It's very pretty, but it's still very, very sequiny. The sequins are a good sign that it's going to be really sparkly, and it is. <gasps> wow. Ah, that's way too much. If I'm going out on the town for a night out, this is a bit more intense for me for an everyday highlighter. This is more special occasion. I also think this would probably look gorgeous on the eyes as well as an eyeshadow. So now I've mixed them together. It's a little bit more skin-like. It is very different formula-wise from other Chanel highlighters. I really like it. I'm not sure if I'm gonna love this later on. It might start to sink into my foundation. I don't know if this is going to emphasize texture and end up looking really harsh on the skin. But I think for photos, for an evening out, for a holiday party, this would be really pretty. I was gonna use the oversized highlighter on the nose, but then that duo highlighter kind of threw me off and I needed to keep trying it. Let me just layer it on this side. 
think this one is a little bit softer as well. They look really nice together, actually. You could probably use this as a blush topper. I probably should have used this as a blush for the day. That would have been pretty. Which side do you like? Turbo Sparkle or Soft and Peachy? Which would be my favorite if I had to choose? Hmm. I feel like this one is probably the most wearable in this particular shade. The sequin highlighter for the holiday collection, I don't see myself grabbing that regularly. That's not to say it's a bad product or I don't recommend it, but that is really a once in a while getting full glam type of highlighter. I don't want micro glitters and real sparkle sparkle on my cheek if I'm just running to Publix. Even if I was going to an event, I feel like if I showed up with quite so much sparkle on my face, I might feel a little bit silly. The liquid highlighter I love. It's beautiful. It comes with a little brush. It has skincare. I'm not sure you can really justify a $95 highlighter that comes with such little product. We're covering so many products today. Hopefully this video doesn't get too long and boring for you. I still have three more lipsticks to try and then we're done. I'm gonna go lightest to deepest. I feel like this one might need a lip liner, but I'm not sure. This is Golden Beige number 90. It's the Rouge Allure Lac. I really like the Rouge Allure Lac formula. Mm. Hmm. Okay, it's not terrible. I do think it would look better with a liner. Reminds me of a shade that they had. Ooh, my lips aren't excessively dry, but the gold sheen is sort of clinging to the drier parts in the center. With all of the highlighter on my face and then this frosted lip, I feel ridiculous. I'm not doing this lipstick any justice. But people get mad at me when I go in with a lip liner. So for the sake of showing you what it looks like by itself, I know I look like Goldfinger. Next we have Rouge Allure Lac in 91 Fancy Prune. I think this is going to be really dark. <gasps> wow, that is very dark. I don't know why. I guess because I just didn't even swatch it or see what it looked like. I thought it would be dark, but it's different for me. I don't know if I have any colors like this. I don't know if I like it on me. Is it chic? Am I being too harsh? Or do I look a little bit more gothic? Gothic glam. What do we think? Final lipstick, and this one is a red. This is Rouge Allure L'Extre in the shade 857 Midnight Red. Ooh, this one has a little bit of a metallic sheen in it as well. The first two lipsticks did too. Even the Fancy Prune. I like the color, and it's maybe my favorite of the three. Adding that deeper highlighter to the bridge of the nose sort of messed up the makeup look, but this is the finished Chanel Holiday 2023 makeup look. I am really excited to keep experimenting and playing around with all of these products. Overall thoughts, the embossing, the designs, the artistry, absolutely beautiful. The eyeshadow palette is really stunning for a holiday palette. Some people might find it boring and maybe a bit expected. Others might say it's a little bit too sparkly and metallic and not wearable enough. It's really gonna come down to your personal collection. I think quality-wise, color-wise, it's a really pretty palette. The lipsticks I should have skipped and I know better. I'm on a very strict no buy, low buy for lipsticks. The prune is not my favorite. The metallic beige is somewhat pretty. This red is fine, but I have so many similar red lipsticks from Chanel. That would be my only regret. I love all of the highlighters. They're so pretty. It's hard to mess up highlighter. I mean, highlighter is beautiful. It adds glow, it adds shimmer, it photographs beautifully. It looks gorgeous in the sunlight. I am definitely getting into the holiday spirit now that I have the Chanel holiday collection that really is the marker for me and now I can embrace the holidays and there's so much to look forward to. Mark your calendars, be on the lookout, 
Friday the 13th, I believe, is when the holiday set should be launching. And then, of course, I will continue to update you as soon as any of these collections launch online. I will make sure to let you know down in the comment section. I will post a community post, throw it on Instagram stories as well. And that completes today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it and you liked hearing my thoughts on all of these highlighters, all of these collections. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Leave me your comments, questions down below. I'm curious to hear your thoughts on the holiday collection. Are you picking up any of these pieces? Are you skipping it this year? If you are skipping it, or even if you're purchasing, I'm curious what holiday collection you are most excited about this year. Drop it in the comments. We will keep the conversation going there. As always, I will be linking everything mentioned. Everything on my face will be listed down below in the description box for your convenience. And for more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell.